John Slutsky has been milking cows since the early 1980s. His professional life rising and falling with what his livestock excrete, and not just from their udders. It's like a buffet for the manure connoisseur. Manure. The dirty, dark side of working with these adorable Holsteins is the enormous logistical challenge of dealing with waste. Slutsky considers himself an environmentally conscious guy, so he worries about all the methane produced as that manure breaks down. Then the whole methane thing and, and, and uh, greenhouse gases, all of that is more important to many in our industry. If only he lived about 50 miles southeast. This is Heartland Biogas, a new facility bringing in truckload after truckload of manure from nearby dairies. All of the buildings and pools here add up to what's called a digester. What's brought in gets liquefied, cooked up and mixed together, speeding up the production of methane out the other end. You, know, you can think of the digester the same as, I, as your own guts, if you can. So, so this is where all the cow poop ends up. This is the cow up. poop ends up right here. Bob Yost is showing me around Heartland. With a little more refining, that methane becomes chemically identical to the natural gas drilled from underground. The gas produced here goes straight into a pipeline on site, just like any other natural gas. It's injected into the pipeline, and then it's delivered to anywhere in the country. Destructive greenhouse gases that would be escaping into the atmosphere anyway, going to good use. Dairy farms have been building digesters for years, but the technology is advancing and diversifying. It turns out the way to get the most methane from your digester is to have a balanced diet of manure and food scraps. I got the turkey bacon wok burger. That's where restaurants like Denver's Park Burger come in. We do have a couple of gray recycling bins as well as bins with no bag, which is our composting setup. General manager TJ McReynolds pays a little bit more for composting services on top of his trash bill. He figured it would all end up as mulch somewhere. Uh, never once said I even considered it being used for natural gas. Hundreds of Colorado restaurants, schools, and groceries have begun sending their scraps to Heartland. There could be 25, 30 semi-loads per day eventually of, of food waste coming in, and then the manure is added to that. The company Yoast works with, A1 Organics, coordinates the delivery of all that food waste. It comes in all types. A lot of it's still in packaging. Well, this had sweet tea in it. Luckily, this machine at the digester can tear all that apart to get to the valuable organics inside. Unfortunately, all of this is a prospect tantalizingly out of reach for Slutsky. His farm is too far from the Heartland facility and too small to build his own primitive digester which really only makes financial sense for operations with 2,000 cows or more. Slutsky has 1,500. Well, we have a business to run, and um, it's not going to do us any good if we build a digester and go out of business. It's a tough position to be in, big enough to have to deal with mounds and mounds of manure, too small to make any money off it. It's where most American dairies find themselves, their methane remaining wasted. Yet, our story does not end here, for there is another important source of concentrated organic waste. If you can picture 8 million gallons of what people have flushed down their toilets, that's what I'm smelling right now. We're at the wastewater treatment plant in Grand Junction, Colorado, and that distinctive smell of sewage is starting to smell like money to manager Dan Tonello. The plant has had a digester for decades, but most of the methane used to be flared off into the air. Not good for the environment and a waste of a wonderful resource. So the city spent just under $3 million for the natural gas refining equipment, and rather than just putting it into a pipeline or generating electricity with it, Tonello had another idea. In the evening when the trucks are done with their routes, they hook up, fill up. Grand Junction has been replacing an aging fleet of garbage trucks and buses with natural gas vehicles, fueled mostly by the human-sourced gas from the treatment plant. 
Tonello says Grand Junction is the first city in the nation to do that. We're looking at hundreds of thousands of dollars a year being saved by implementing this process. That's a model for small wastewater treatment plants anywhere in the country. Renewable natural gas emerged to me. Joanna Underwood works with Energy Vision, an environmental group which promotes now. this renewable natural gas. And she says a closed system like this using biogas to run a fleet of vehicles is the most efficient way to use a digester. Every time you convert a bus fleet or a refuse truck fleet or a produce delivery fleet to renewable natural gas, you've had a huge impact. Because more often than not, those natural gas fleets are replacing diesel fleets, which are much more polluting. Underwood says if all the organic waste in the country were gathered from dairies, food producers, and sewage plants, current technologies could produce enough natural gas to replace about half of the diesel fuel used in the U.S. transportation sector. So not a replacement for the traditional oil and gas industry by a long shot, but Underwood argues practical solutions to climate change have to be assembled piece by piece. One thing isn't going to do it. But for this sector, which in and of itself is big, it's not a small piece. And it's a piece Dan Tonello at the Grand Junction Wastewater Treatment Plant says we can all contribute to. One cubic foot of natural gas per day, if you were wondering. So when you're walking down the street and you're seeing other people, are you thinking to yourself, potential fuel source, potential fuel source? I can honestly say no. For Inside Energy, I'm Dan Boyce.